All right. Hello, everyone. I hope that you're all doing well. Um, originally, for this week's video, I wanted to talk about Lapfona. Lapfona, if you don't know, is the title of a recent novel written by Otessa Moshveq. And I've been reading uh, and thinking about that novel. I still need more time before I can discuss that, um, discuss that book. So for this week's video, I decided to pick another book, another important book, important for me, and talk with you a little bit about that, about that other book. It's an older one, and it is called The Neighbors. At least in the English translation, it is called The Neighbors. This is the English uh, translation, library copy. So most of the title is covered with that sticker. Uh, maybe I can show you the title page. So The Neighbors. The author is Ahmad Mahmoud. Ahmad Mahmoud. And the translator is Nastaran Khirat. Nastaran Khirat. Professor Nastaran Khirat. Um, so Ahmad Mahmoud is, is a major figure in modern Iranian literature, Persian literature, contemporary um, fiction. He has written several novels and several collections of short stories. This is, as far as I know, the only work that is translated to English. And it is considered to be his major work. Um, the... The version that I have read is the original. Uh, it's the title is Hamsayha. Hamsayha is it means neighbors, and this is Ahmad Mahmoud's name. Now I have read parts of the translation, and I can tell you the translation is really great. Um, it captures the meaning, <laughs> and I can also say that. The, reading the original made me uh, feel it would be really almost impossible to translate this work. And the, I think the translator, Professor Khirat, um has overcome the challenge, solved the, has solved the problem of translating this work. And there are, as a result of that solution, certain things, uh, I mean, there are certain flavors the translation has some flavors and characteristics that are not necessarily in the original. And two of those that come to my mind is that the first one is about the colloquial character of the, the original text. It's very, um, very down to earth. I mean, um, the author Mahmoud is writing about really poor people, working class people who talk with each other in their you know, local language and dialect. And there's nothing formal about that. In the translation, there, there's a little bit more formality. It's like a language; the language is polished and decent. Um, a second feature that comes to my mind is the tempo and pace of the language. That in the original, the pace is quite fast, and it's like da, 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 it's a, like a faster rhythm. Uh, the the life of the text is is fast. It's very passionate and messy. The translation is neat and slow. You can almost feel the, the gentle touch of the translator going through the lines and kind of crafting the language. So as a result of that gentle touch, the translation is, is more polished, it is more slow, more well-paced. It's more like uh, classical music. <laughs> uh, but the original is, is messy, it's more lively and fast. Um, there is a lot of imagery in the in this novel. And the imagery is so much that almost, you know, I don't want to make an explicit reference to psychoanalysis, but the the symbolic <laughs> the symbolic register is much weaker than the Im the imaginary register of the in the in this text in the novel. So we get a lot of not so organized images going through the mind of the narrator. So the, the, the novel we read 
the story, we confront a world, we follow the central character, and the central character is the narrator of the of the novel. We follow him for a duration of about two years. And from the time he's around 16 to when he's around 18, 19. And we find him in his house. The house is like a structured building. So there's a structured building where a bunch of families live together. They're, na they're neighbors. They imagine a building with uh, rooms organized around uh, a, a central space. That central space, you can think of it as a courtyard uh, where a little small pool is at that center. Neighbors sometimes come together in that, in that central space, in that middle space. And they have rooms in the periphery and each set of rooms is, um, is a living place of a family. In the very beginning, the first page of this novel, uh, we have a scene of a beating. That's quite interesting that the novel begins with a beating, the beating of a woman by her husband. And you can think of that as symbolic, but you don't really have to think of it as symbol of anything. It's just that beating of a woman is a piece of the world that we are, we are being introduced to. We are, we are being pulled into this world of the novel, the world of that time, of that culture. And one of the things that was true about that world was that it was not unusual for a husband to beat his wife. I mean, it was unusual. It was not a common thing. But when it happened, the neighbors would not inter intervene, interfere or intervene. Um, it would, they would just be quiet. They would stay in their own parts of the house and would just hear about the beating, they would hear the, yet the, the screams of the, this poor woman. Um, now our character is also a young person. So young people, similar to women, didn't receive much respect from figures of authority, from father figures, from religious figures. And against that background, against that background where uh, women, children, teenagers are not that, are, are not respected. They are not encouraged to continue their education against that background. Our narrator meets a bunch of people who are different and they are not only cultured, they are not only more sophisticated um, uh, and well-read, they don't just read books, um, they're not just in in intellectuals, but they are also politically active. So we become aware of the political context, the political atmosphere, and the story we realize it is happening in at a time where there's a struggle to make uh, oil, nas to nationalize oil in Iran, and to take it out, uh, out of the control of the British agencies and companies and the political actors. And the political actors that who are in power in Iran at the time, so grassroots movements, socialist movements, or people, collectives, who are relying on these socialist tools um, trying to form groups, trying to form collectives, trying to um, communicate with each other that if we don't, if we don't help one another, if we poor people, working class people, if we don't help each other, nobody is going to help us. So that sentiment starts to uh, grow in the mind of our um, our central character, our narrator. Now, Ahmad Mahmoud really, um, in a very beautiful, artful way, he kind of shows a case, an example of participating in a movement, kind of joining in a movement, becoming part of a movement without really understanding at first what's going on. Our character is first charmed by a set of mentor figures who respect him. And that respect is unusual. The fact that they don't refer to him as, hey, kid, but instead they say, hey, young man. And for him, that's uh, that's refreshing, that's new, and also it's, that is an entry point into a world that he doesn't understand at first, but slowly realizes that it is possible first, that that other way of living, other way of thinking is possible. The reason why I think this novel is still relevant, it is still really important, especially for people in Iran, but also um, maybe for others. 
um, is that we really get an exploration of this concept of collective, that collective agency matters, like getting together, organizing matters, that you can't think in those terms. You can't think of your neighbors as your, you know, to, to use um, that well-known phrase, as your fellow travelers or fellow sufferers, people who share your fate and people that you can you can join forces with, you can think that you have a common destiny. So um, let's be a little bit more organized, a little bit more caring towards each other, more, you know, things like kindness, paying attention to how we treat each other. It's all about not thinking about ourselves as isolated individuals. What is good for me? What should I do to, to, um, to be successful, to have a good life? But what should we do? What can we do? So this theme of neighbors begins for that teenager, that kid, that young man. And the theme then becomes not only about a group of families that live together in that same building, but then it becomes about people who live together in a city, in the same neighborhood, larger and larger neighborhoods, larger and larger areas. And towards the end, it becomes about neighbors, that the theme is embodied towards the end of the novel in prison. So the neighbors become a bunch of inmates. And even in prison, the question is raised. What can we do now? Is there, are there uh, things we can do? Um, can we trust each other? Can we trust that we're all going to uphold, we're all, we are all going to stay true this spirit of the group and decide to do something together like going on strike can we trust that the other person other people the other inmates are also going to stay with us like the prisoner's dilemma um yeah the book is really for many reasons it's it's worth reading and thinking about um and the politics i mean you can, if you want, if you're cynical, you can think of it as like a story of um, a bunch of people who are sympathetic to socialism and have high hopes about their possible success. But it's not really about that. And in fact, maybe I can now tell you a little bit about this translator. Professor Nasran Khirat uh, did not just translate this novel. She also wrote a PhD dissertation um, I think from a cultural standpoint, sociological standpoint, um, discussing the relevance of Ahmad Mahmoud. She said that my, while, uh, while many people might dismiss Ahmad Mahmoud as a communist thinker or a socialist thinker, as somebody who used fiction as a vehicle for his ideology or political beliefs, it is it will be more fair to see Mahmoud as primarily a storyteller, as primarily a novelist, a writer of fiction. And he did not, um, to say that means that he did not sacrifice the realism of his work, the, the, the reality that he was trying to represent, the truth that he was trying to embody and plot in fiction. He did not sacrifice that um, to push an ideology to, to kind of promote, advocate an ideology like socialism. Because his characters contain lots of inconsistencies and paradoxes that give them reality. And that is, that is just not consistent with him uh, promoting a, a political stance. He is really, I would agree here with Professor Kharat that Ahmad Mahmoud is a storyteller and he is worth returning to and, I mean, staying in contact with as that with that role uh, what else can I say I I think that might be good like okay I, I'll say one thing um, one of the one of the forms of this collective like it's not just about me is in family family relationships family bonds our characters our central characters father is I mean he's not the wisest person 
he has some uh, challenges with his work. He's kind of out of job in, in the first half of the book. And one way to solve that is he kind of relies on religious superstition. And there, there is kind of a religious um, scholar or pseudo-scholar who is take, taking advantage of him, kind of tricking him, um, or at least bullshitting him. And our character's father eventually leaves those superstitions, leaves his disengages from those superstitions and decides to travel to Kuwait, to a neighboring country, and find work there and then send some money and then eventually comes back. When he comes back, he finds our character in prison. And that scene, the encounter between our character in prison and his father who visits him on the Persian New Year, that is a very powerful uh, scene. And it is, it is a scene that doesn't say, my father is so, so great, my father is my hero, or that I am so great, or that our relationship is so great, because none of those things are true. Uh, what is true is that there is a bond there. And that bond, that tie, that familial tie, the father-son tie, regardless of the imperfection of those both characters, regardless of the imperfection of their relationship, there is still something there. And that thing that is there is portrayed uh, very well by the author. It's a very brief scene, but it is really powerful and unforgettable. I think uh, I'll just end it there. If, um, if you are curious about if you are curious about Persian literature, Iranian authors, Ahmad Mahmoud is a key writer, contemporary writer. This book was published in um, 1974, and it is still relevant. Uh, it is still worth reading. Um, it was both before and after the revolution, which was in 1979, so five years five years after the publication of this book. Both governments frowned upon this book. The first government, the Shah, the, the king uh, frowned upon the book that government because of the socialist sentiments in the in the novel the islamic republic um, also didn't like the book and censored it heavily for the sexual content so this is one of those cases where a work of art is really treated without kindness <laughs> um, by two very different regimes at, at least superficially different regimes and it is the work of art that is uh, that is more truthful, that is more human than both of those those regimes. And that is what I think um, we have a duty to kind of return to and preserve, learn from, learn from. All right. Um, thank you for your attention. This was a very late recording. It's past 11 p.m. I hope it was somewhat coherent. And um, next week, we will turn to Lap, Lapvona, Lapvona by Utesa Moshvech. All right. Thank you. And till then.